Hello, this is Trisha Reinhardt. I'm the Information Services Director over at the Regis College Library. And today I'm going to be talking to you about copyright and permissions, which I know is a really fun topic. Uh, and I promise this is not going to be a boring PowerPoint presentation, uh, but I'm gonna talk about what is copyright, what's covered under copyright, what isn't covered, what you do and don't need to get permission for. Um, and then I'll give some examples of how you can obtain permission for certain things that you are using as part of your project. Um, so to begin, what is copyright? It is the exclusive rights held by creators to their original works. You may also hear it referred to as their intellectual property. And so what does that mean? What is covered under copyright? So you, you'll you see books, journal articles, images or diagrams within those books or journal articles, any measurement tools, instruments, surveys, questionnaires, scales, any of those, um, and much more in what's called concrete form, which means that it has been written down and published somewhere, like in a book or a journal article, or a website. Um, what is not covered under copyright are ideas, facts, or concepts. Now, if I say I have an idea about this certain thing that I want to do, it's just an idea right now. That is, that is not covered under copyright. Once it gets published in something, like a journal article, gets written down and published and it's in it's in a concrete form, then it becomes covered under copyright. So when you are working on your project, what do I need to get permission for? You may have heard your professor say, well, you need to get permission for this. You need to ask permission to use this. Um, that means you need to contact the original creator or publisher for images, figures, or diagrams, as well as any tools or instruments that you're using as part of your study. Um, now, a note on the tools. They may not be freely available in the articles that you're seeing. You may see reference to them, or you may see um, snippets of them in a results table or that sort of thing. Um, so you may need to contact the authors of that tool for access to the actual tool as well as permission to use it. Now, what do I not need to get permission for? What, what is not covered under that permission requirement? So if you are paraphrasing or quoting small sections of an article or a book um, with proper citation, of course, this is covered under fair use. So you don't need to get permission from every single article to use information from that article. Uh, you don't need to get permission to use a theory or framework. Um, but you're talking about how that applies to your project. You don't need to get permission to use that. Uh, the exception is if you have a specific image or diagram of the theory, that's where you need to get the permission to use it, um, to use that specific image or diagram. And you need to get permission from the original creator of the image. So this might not be the actual creator of the theory or framework. This may be another article that's using that theory or talking about the theory and has created that image of the of the theory and that's where you need to get permission the original creator of that image um, and anything that is noted to be in the public domain or covered under a creative commons license so an example of these would be for the creative commons license here we have we have an article here and down the bottom of the first page, the article um, copyright statement here says that it's open access. This article is licensed under a Creative Commons license, uh, which permits the use, sharing, adaptation, distribution, and reproduction 
in any medium or format as long as you give appropriate credit to the original authors. Um, they also note the images or other third party material are included in the license as well, unless otherwise noted. So pay attention to those notes underneath the images um, to see if there's another copyright statement under those. Um, but as far as this article goes and anything covered under this article, you only have to attribute with an appropriate Creative Commons attribution statement, which I can show you where to go um, to find out more about that later on. As far as the public domain, we're looking at this particular scale here. A lot of times it will be noted. It'll say is now this scale is now in the public domain, so you can use it. You don't have to request permission. You just have to attribute appropriately and note that it is in the, the public domain. And I always say when in doubt, just ask permission. If you're not sure, reach out to the author, reach out to the publisher and ask permission. Start that scholarly conversation. Let them know what you're working on, how their work is going to be used. A lot of authors really appreciate that. They like knowing how their content is being used um, and then ask permission to use it. And if you don't need permission, they'll let you know that. They'll say this is covered under a license. This is in the public domain, um, but at least you're covering all of your bases um, and covering that requirement of getting permission. Now for other items where you do have to actually get permission, you've determined I need, I do need to ask permission to use this. How do I get permission? So there's a few different ways. Um, you know, it really depends on what you're looking at and what you, you're wanting to use, but I'll show you the three most common ways that we see. Um, the first way is a lot of times some of these evidence-based models, like this Johns Hopkins one, for instance, will have a request permission um, page here where you can click on this and then you fill out this form. And once you submit it, they give you a file that has your license agreement uh, within that file, as well as the full image of the the model um, now pay attention to how they want you to attribute because a lot of times they will say please put this specific copyright um, statement underneath the image so make sure you are reading your licensing agreements so that you are attributing things appropriately and using them appropriately um, another way that you can request permission is from the corresponding author within the article. So here we have a particular uh, model of this knowledge to action process. And so I wanna use this in my project, but how do I ask permission? So I'm gonna go up to the very first page of the article where it has the abstract and the author information. And you're gonna look for this. This one says correspondence. It might say corresponding author. And you wanna look for the email here. And so this is the email that you can use to contact them. Now, if this is an older article, um, which I believe this article is, yes, several years old from 2006, you may want to Google the author name um, and see if there's any updated contact information for them because sometimes they, they move, um, they go to a, a different institution or they start working for a, a different um, hospital or organization. And so you wanna make sure that you are getting the most up-to-date information for them um, to be able to, to email them. So make sure you're doing your due diligence and being resourceful and, and just Google their name and affiliation and see if they still work there before you email them. Now, the last way I'll show you how to get permission is from the publisher's site. So you may see 
uh, Wiley or Science Direct or Taylor and Francis, those are all publishers that these journals are published within. And when you go to the article site, the article page um, on the publisher site here, you can also get permission here. So you might see permissions, you might see get rights and, and content like here. Um, look for language like that. And then when you click on this, what it does is it takes you through the uh, Copyright Clearance Center, which is, um, they use this rights link, which you can use, a lot of different publishers use it. So you can request permission from many different publishers using the same rights link account. So here you indicate how you wanna use it. So you would do reuse in a thesis dissertation and the page will reload for you to finish filling out the form. Um, you're gonna use a figure, table or illustration. Um, and usually you're only doing one. And so here the format is you wanna make sure that you're doing both print and electronic because we do have a printed copy uh, in the library of your dissertation, as well as it being published through ProQuest online. So make sure you are choosing both print and electronic. No, you are not the author of the article. No, you will not be translating it. Um, and then sometimes there is a cost associated with using a particular image. Um, it depends on the publisher. So just keep that in mind when you're requesting permission. Um, and then you just hit continue. You'll want to create a rights link account. It's a free account that you can use, like I said, across many different publishers for requesting permission. Um, and then they'll let you know what the licensing agreement is um, and all of that after you've um, completed that transaction. So those are just a few different ways um, that we, the most common ways that we've seen to actually go in and request permission to use um, a particular copyrighted item, like an image, a diagram, a tool or instrument, those sorts of things. Um, now, if you weren't already aware, um, we have a research guide that you might find helpful. So I'm back at the library homepage here. And under our research guides, um, you can get to the guide a few different ways. I'm going to go down to the nursing graduate and doctoral subject here, and we have copyright and permissions. And so this is a guide that went over a lot of the same stuff that um, I went over with you here. You know, what is copyright? How do I get permissions? But it also has guidelines here on citing and attributing your items in um, APA. And so here's a handy little table here that you can use to kind of plug in your information of the particular item that you are attributing, that you've received permission to use or determined that it's in the public domain or has a Creative Commons license. And this is the formula that, that you'll, you'll use to plug in all of your information. Um, and then here is the reprinted with permission after you've received permission um, that you'll put at the end of that attribution statement. Um, now, if you have any questions at all, or you, you're not sure how to get permission for your particular item, um, you, you know, you've gone in, you've tried it, and you're still not sure, that's okay, this is a very complicated process. It can be a very complicated process and we are here to help you here at the library. So if you go to the library homepage and go under the contact us here, you can scroll down to our research consultation request form here. Um, and so you can fill this out, let us know what you're working on, what you're trying to get permission for, so we can look into it ahead of time before we meet with you and let us know your availability. That way we can match you up with a librarian that's available when you are. 
uh, once you submit it, we'll get back to you with a librarian that's available and to set up a consultation time. Um, now we do prefer Zoom for consultations for copyright and permissions. That way we can share our screen with you or you can share your screen with us and we can go through the process as if you're sitting there right with us um, as opposed to over the phone, which gets a little more complicated. You can also email us uh, with any any quick questions about, you know, do I need permission to use this uh, reference at regiscollege.edu. Uh, so that is copyright and permissions in a nutshell, a crash course on it. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, when in doubt, if you're not sure, you can, of course, ask the librarian, ask us here at the library. But, um, you know, you can also just ask reach out to the the author and 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 start that scholarly conversation because that's that's really an important process point in in this process um but if you have any questions or anything just get in touch with us we're happy to help you any step of the way uh and thank you for watching